Hello, welcome to the England Women Press Conference of the first game of the ICC Women's World Cup. We've got Anne Shropsol here. We're going to start in the room with Snahal Pradhan, and then once everyone in the room is finished, we'll come to those on Zoom. So please flag your questions in the chat box. Snahal. And as a swing bowler, how much uh, have you found the conditions here in the couple of practice games to be conducive, useful? Uh, and have you had a chance to really play under lights and see how the ball is kind of doing uh, when conditions change in the evening? Um, the, we obviously had a game, a uh, second warm-up game against South Africa. There was a little bit of rain around, which obviously massively helped, um, I guess, get some movement through the air and things like that. I think the pitches at Christchurch and Lincoln were, were pretty good pitches, and that's, I guess, what we're expecting here throughout New Zealand. But obviously with a bit of breeze around, it can quite often obviously help. Um, help seam and swing bowlers and that's something we're kind of um, expecting a bit particularly early in the tournament um, we haven't had an opportunity to get out here under lights just yet we only obviously only flew into Hamilton um, yesterday but we've got a training session um, this evening so we'll get a bit of a chance to see that and get used to fielding out here and the news of Ash I mean having to miss out because of COVID did it uh, is, does it feel like there was a little bit of inevitability to it or did it almost increase the anxiety a little bit around the fact that uh, this could happen to any team? Yeah, I guess first and foremost, a lot of obviously my <laughs> thoughts go to, to Ash. I think no one wants anyone in any team to, to get COVID and have to isolate. So obviously I can imagine it's pretty gutting for her and hopefully we'll only miss a couple of games. So I guess first and foremost, I hope she's, she's doing all right. And I think, yeah, like you said, I think... I. I'd have been amazed if it was a COVID-free tournament. Um, you obviously, fingers crossed, hope that. Um, but yeah, I guess it just puts everyone on on high alert and you know that it's always a possibility. Um, like I said, fingers crossed, there isn't too much of it around um, and we can have a, a really good tournament. Um, after two warm-up games against Bangladesh and South Africa, how settled does the team feel in its plans and how are you going to approach this tournament? Yeah, we've, we, we feel in a good place. Um, Two really positive um, warm-up games. Everyone, batters, bowlers have had time out in the middle and, and got some runs and wickets under their belt, which is, is all you can ask for coming out of out of warm-up games. So that we're in as good a place as we can be to come out here um, tomorrow against Australia and, and get the tournament underway. Yeah, and I know the Ashes feel like a long time ago now. Has the team fully packed that and moved, moved forward? Yeah, absolutely we have. I think there's obviously no getting away um, from the fact that it was a really difficult tour. Um, we know particularly at the front end of the tour, we played some really good cricket and um, kind of stood toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I think obviously those last two ODIs weren't what we were about as a team and I think that's one of the most disappointing things. Um, you accept that you're going to lose sometimes, but you at least want to lose the way you want to play and we went away from that a little bit. But like you said, we've had we've had quarantines, we've had some time in Queenstown warm up games. So I think that's that's completely behind us and we're just really excited to to start our World Cup campaign. Thanks for those in the room. We'll start with Henry Moran on Zoom please. Hi Moran, yeah uh, there's a lot of talk about Australia and their strength and their brand form in rival cricket, one day cricket, does tomorrow feel like a little bit of a free hit because of the expectation that's placed on Australia? I think um, they've obviously been the form team in, in world cricket over the last five years and, and I think there's no getting away from the fact that they're um, favourites coming into this tournament. Um, so I think in lots of respects we don't really have anything to lose coming out here tomorrow. I think, like I said before, we, sh we showed in the Ashes if we play our best cricket um, that we're really competitive, we just didn't win those key moments. And the beauty of a World Cup is, is they're all one-off games and, and we, we believe that if we play our best cricket on a one-off day that we'll be really competitive. Just a couple more from me. You look back at that 2017 tournament, no doubt that final were very special memories. Why are World Cups so special? Well, they come around, well, most of the time, they come around every four years. Obviously, this one's been, um, been five years in the making and um, just the nature of the tournament, having eight teams, every, eight teams here, everything just kind of feels more, basically, and um, they're just so exciting to be a part of and to, I guess, be involved in a tournament on the global stage is, is what it's all about, really. And just finally, from you, we've seen the games in West Indies and New Zealand today, uh, players taking the knee, but we see a similar gesture from, from this England side. Yeah, so as an England side, we're going to take the knee before um, before every game. It's something we feel really strongly about, that um, racism and, and any form of, um, I guess, segregation, anything like that, isn't isn't welcome in sport. And 
Um, we obviously kind of have the moment of unity in the Ashes with Australia, and it's something that we've um, done um, back in England in all our home series. So it's something that, that we will be doing, and we feel really strongly as a group that, obviously, as, as sports people on the global stage, we have a real platform that any kind of prejudice is, is not welcome in our game. Thanks, Anya. Thanks, Henry. Fabiani, please. Thank you. Um, hi, Anya. My question is that uh, there are two previous matches that Australia and England have played in the World Cup. They have been very close matches. What do you think the ICC tournaments bring out the um, best out of these two teams and make you play the best game of the tournaments? I think, like I said, if, if both teams play well, I think they're two um, kind of relatively evenly matched teams and, and the games have, have seemingly gone down to the wire. Um, like I said, the nature of World Cups is, is they're one-off games and, and quite often they get quite close. So, um, I mean, for my own nerves, hopefully it's not <laughs> super close out there tomorrow, but it wouldn't surprise me if it was. Also, uh, this is not the game-related question, it's just for you, that in the team 20 World Cup before the pressers, I mean, Kate Cross said that uh, you once rapped the entire Eminem song. My question is, if you remember, I just want to know what song that was. As an Eminem fan, I want to know that. Oh, you want to know what song it was? So I thought you were going to ask me to do it. Um, no, it was um, Cleaning Out My Closet, obviously. <laughs> No, Heather Knight massively, she stitched, she stitched me up, Heather Knight. We went to this kind of karaoke bar and she just put this song on and was like, off you go, Andy. And um, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, could you just do that? It's Eminem. I don't think we can, we can go near Eminem in the press conference. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. I think that was the perfect time to throw it to Ben. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to ask, um, with the news of Ash Gardner's positive test, I mean, is it really good enough? I mean, we've got Australia's Player of the Year who now missed this match. Is there any integrity issue? Would you like to see, you know, tougher bubbles or, or, or more could be done to stop players from getting COVID? Um, God, I mean, many of those things are, are way above my pay grade, but having been involved in, in some really strict COVID bubbles, my answer would be no. Um, they're mentally they're really really challenging and I think to ask players to do that over and over and over again just isn't sustainable um I think it's it's kind of the reality obviously it's been two years now Covid's not isn't going to go away and we have to find a way globally uh, with with governing bodies or whatever when they have series to make it work with a bit of a backdrop of Covid and like I said like I said I'm, I'm absolutely gutted for for Ash that it's happened to her and um but I do think it's inevitable and I, I don't think the answer is really strict biosecure bubbles because they're just not realistic over a long period of time. Thank you so much. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. From a time point of view, we'll try and keep it to one question for the last few. I'm not sure if you have a question right now, but if you do, could you just re-flag in the chat box? Go on, Mesh, please. Uh, hi, I uh, just uh, wanted to ask about uh, from turning the match around in the last half marathon, five years ago in at Lords, uh, where you were right now with the tournament, right? I'm in a World Cup tournament uh, right in front of you. Uh, how do you look back from that moment to here and what potentially could be in the next 30 days or so? Um, I think, sorry, there's some random music playing. <laughs> um, I think obviously that was, was an amazing tournament to be a part of, to be able to play in a World Cup at your home ground, at your, in your home country, sorry, is, is something really special to be a part of. Um, and this is something all of the girls who are involved will, will never forget. I think obviously five years has passed, a lot has changed. I don't think what happened then will have any bearing on, on what happens now. Teams, players have, have all evolved and um, look, we're obviously desperate to come here and, and try and defend this title. Thank you, and all the rest for the tournament. Thank you. Thanks, Gomesh. And it looks as if we'll be ending with Millie, please. Thanks. Uh, hi, Anya. Um, along well, with similar vein, we said the last time you played a ODI World Cup match, you took the best figures ever in a, a World Cup final five years on. Is that something you think would need to be capable of doing and getting back to against the world like it was in 2017? Oh, look, I'd obviously, I'd obviously hope so. Um, otherwise, I'm not sure there's a huge amount of point me um, 
being here if I don't think I'm obviously capable of taking wickets. But again, like I said, I think that has um, absolutely zero bearing on, on what happens here. They're amazing memories and amazing day to be a part of. But this is five years later on and and a fresh World Cup in a different country. And um, yeah, I'm just really excited to get out there and get going. Thanks very much, everybody. Take care. See you tomorrow. <laughs>